This is a rotating ball with a quasi-crystal interior, and it appears to be quite random without any particular kind of organization as it turns in front of us in this computer-generated image. But there are ways to turn it where it seems to be made up of two-fold symmetry, three-fold symmetry, and five-fold symmetry, as we've just seen. That is to say, there are ways to turn it where it appears to be made up of squares and cubes, ways, ways to turn the very same object where it appears to be made up of five-pointed stars and pentagons, and where it appears to be made up of triangles and tetrahedra. So my computer uh, program that I have written generates large-scale quasi-crystals. This is a dome, which we're seeing from different angles as it turns. This is also uh, a depiction of the shadows of the dome as the sun would pass overhead. There are a handful of researchers who have looked at uh, quasi-crystal or related structures for architectural purposes, but without a computer algorithm to generate these non-repeating patterns in three-dimensional space, it really is not practical to proceed to try to build uh, architectural structures. And without rotating dynamic images such as these, it is difficult to truly understand their dynamic properties and their potential uh, to build structures that change their apparent shape as the sun passes overhead or as the viewer simply passes through the space and looks, uh, looks around, looks to the left, looks to the right. This is uh, even more uh, obvious, more exciting in large, larger scale structures. My computer program can make arbitrarily large structures which uh, as they rotate before you have two-fold symmetry of squares and rhomboids, three-fold symmetries of triangles, and five-fold symmetries of pentagons and star pentagons. Every quasi-crystal structure is different from every other one, and parts of quasi-crystal structures are different from themselves. There's, these are non-repeating patterns itself an apparent contradiction but a fascinating visual uh, property of quasi-crystal structures and is um, an important part of their fascination as architectural structures. It is now known that such structures do exist in nature. They can be made with certain alloys of aluminum. Uh, these uh, new objects, new states of matter, were just discovered uh, about five years ago, and this mathematics is only ten years old. So to actually build one, uh, we would need nodes and rods. The nodes are dodecahedra. Every node is identical. Every node is in the same orientation. They are connected by rods of the same length. They make uh, the exact same two-dimensional shape and they form themselves into three-dimensional cells of only two kinds, a fat rhomboid and a skinny rhomboid. These subassemble into the uh, few zonohedra, which I showed you earlier in the program, and all of these together make a quasi-crystal structure. Some of the planes of the structure have been filled in with plexiglass, and a light is shining through it to simulate sunlight. built large-scale structures of uh, hundreds of nodes. And this is a dome shape with uh, a five-fold symmetry perimeter. Now, these passages are uh, simulations of time-lapse photograph as the sun passes over. We see a continual change in image as the, uh, as the sun passes over, changing from two-fold symmetry at noon and to five-fold symmetry in the afternoon. Some of the nodes are moving because they're shadows. Some are fixed because they're the actual physical nodes. These also are uh, 
you know, views of images that you would see as you walked by looking up. Here's threefold symmetry going to dissolve to the star shape in the middle of fivefold symmetry and dissolving again. For the Coast Project in Copenhagen, parts were made outside of the building and brought in uh, as uh, sub-assemblies. And in the space, larger assemblies were made. Then plates were uh, put onto the structure. The plates are used for structural stability and also to, uh, for their color and aesthetic properties. They also show the different mathematical properties of quasicrystals. All the plates are pre-cut and assemble easily. We're working here on the large-scale structure, which has two different scales of quasicrystals intertwined. One of the interesting things about quasicrystals is that they subdivide into smaller examples of themselves, somewhat like fractals, except that they fill space completely. My helpers are four graduate students and civil engineers in civil engineering, master's candidates, and uh, an older gentleman who ran the machine shop at uh, the university, although we didn't have to remake any parts. Here you can see some of the mirror and half mirrored uh, plates that reflect sunlight up into the sculpture and into the room. The sculpture was made in four parts, a dome shape, a narrow curv curvaceous snake part, what I'm calling a pinwheel, and this large scale structure that we're working on here. Each of these four parts represents a different aspect of quasicrystals. In Denmark, the piece was hung from the ceiling from these large piers that uh, support the entire structure. But the piece could also be supported from the floor or cantilevered from the walls. Here we're hosting the dome structure in the well between the uh, stair that go up to the bridges. It's a wonderful space at DTU, the Danish Technical University. It's a three-story atrium spanned by two bridges, and the bridges are reached by two flights of stairs. Uh, so the piece goes over uh, one bridge and under another, and you can walk around corkscrew your way around the piece, see it from all three balconies and also from underneath and from even the, through the sculpture. There are 15 ways that a rhombic dodecahedra can sit in a quasicrystal, and this piece, the pinwheel, is a collection of those 15 ways. It's very rigid once the plates are set in and you can see that uh, it's quite stiff as we're moving it. Now the largest section is being hoisted up. The piece is over 60 feet long. It's 20 feet wide and in places it's 30 feet high. The parts are made to a tolerance of five thousandths of an inch and are attached together with a new adhesive that is uh, capable of supporting over 3,000 pounds per square inch. Even at these very large scales and high tolerances, the piece, the separate parts fit together perfectly. This is facilitated by making a very accurate computer model of uh, all the 
locations of the of of the nodes. Here you can see the shot of the final piece panning along from the dome through the snake to the pinwheel and up into the large scale structure. Here we can see some of the twofold symmetry, some of the threefold symmetry, and soon we'll see some of the fivefold symmetry that you see at every vantage point in the sculpture. Light from the clear stories driven down into the sculpture, reflected up on the walls. This is simulation, but sunlight would work wonderfully to make moving paintings across the room.